They are back, you guys, with new music, with a new tour, and back on the Kevin and Bean Show on K-Rock. Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> please welcome the Smashing Pumpkins. Hey, boys. Welcome back. Uh, well, let's uh, see. So, Billy, you're here, right? I'm, I'm here. James? Yes. Jimmy? Yes, sir. Jeff? Present. Jack? Hello. All right. <laughs> Jack's a team. little bit further back, but okay. Yes, he is. They're all, all here. Well, this is very exciting, guys. First of all, uh, welcome back to K-Rock. I was, I was trying to imagine, Billy, the first time we would have talked to you on the Kevin and Bean Show, it would have to be very close to 25 years ago <laughs> we first met you, which makes us all old men, but you are still out there and you're still doing it. How do you feel about this? I'm a young man. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he meant. Uh, it's great. I mean, I'm happy. I mean, I, I would imagine that th- th- this is probably a, a day, a, 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 a tour that you, for many years, probably never thought would happen, right? Yeah. No, I, I was pretty sure we wouldn't. I After the last time we put out, um, J- uh, Jeff and I, I, I was I thought we were done. So I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm just as surprised as anyone and pleased that we're having a good time. And... Yeah. Was it you getting back together with James that sort of helped this process come together? You know, I, I think uh, it's hard to put things in context um, because we live in this hyperbolic kind of clickbait world. But, you know, our issues were really more familial, you know, like family issues and where we didn't see eye to eye on sort of how things would go. Mm-hmm. Uh, music was never the issue with us. And that's why we always were productive as a group. So once we kind of repaired that that part of things, and it just was, seemed simple to go back to making music. How do you repair that type of thing? You just have to sort of come clean and say, here's what I'm still upset about? I think we just, I don't know. I, you, I don't want to speak for James, but James? I, I think we were like, whatever was in the past is in the past, and let's just move on. And that's why, I mean, it's like kind of sometimes, I think people would understand it like you have those moments in your family where you, you know, you, you look at your uncle or your brother or something, and you say, look, it's... The, I care more about you than I care about the thing that bothered me. Right. And eventually you just say, I'm just going to let this go. And it doesn't matter, like the, the details and who said what. It's let's just move on. And um, Amen to that, by the way. I think a lot of people should do a lot more of that instead of walking around carrying grudges all the time. I, I, cer- didn't, I certainly, really certainly didn't help me, you know. Yeah. Uh, James, let me ask you, from, from your perspective, I mean, you were as surprised as Billy was that uh, you two found common ground and started working together again? We had dinner in Beverly Hills. That'll right? do it. <laughs> <laughs> and? And uh, <laughs> is that the end of the story? Or? And it was delicious. <laughs> uh, no, no. I, I reached out to Billy and, uh, you know, we just met up for dinner. And um, Was that easy? We're... No. Was uh, Billy paying? No, but it, it... <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember the, uh, I don't remember who paid, but um, n- no, it wasn't easy. But once we actually got together and sort of dropped you know i don't know any sort of awkwardness about Mm -hmm. the past and whatever and that we could be friends from you know that point on and you know appreciate the band and and everything it was it was easy that's a lot easier said than done though do you think it's easier to do because it had been so long yeah Uh, oh sorry no no Uh, i i I was nodding my head yeah i i think time helped and when you get together, I'm sure you all think back to how many great times you had throughout the year, the many, many years and the wonderful experiences you all shared together. I mean, you guys were on a, a Jim, rocket ride. Jimmy was given the thumbs up about all those good times. <laughs> right? All those good, good times. times. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking about right now. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So let's talk about the state of the pumpkins in 2018. So you decided you were going to make a song. And then it just was too fun, and you couldn't help but make a bunch of songs, right? Uh, it's kind of Rick Rubin's fault, because um, we played him eight songs, hoping he would pick one, and he picked all eight. Pick nine. So you said, hey, this is a group of songs we've written. Pick one, and we'll make it a single, and that'll be our comeback. Yeah, and he and said, no. Let everyone know we're going to tour, and you know, pre- pretty basic stuff. Right. And he said, no, I like all eight? Yeah, sh- I was beyond shocked. I, I said we should just do the one. He did. But he's <laughs> Even being after Rick Rubin said that, he's you're being like, ah, let's not do those other songs. <laughs> but it, isn't the word on Rick, though, that he's usually super picky about the songs that that's, he'll I, let you do? I've worked with Rick before, and so that's mm-hmm. why I was so shocked. I thought he was going to be picky, and I wanted him to be picky. That's so why he, you work with him. Yeah, yeah. I did last solo record with him, and we worked with him in 1998, actually did a song. So 
And he's notorious for being, you know, if he doesn't like it, he doesn't like it. There's no way you're going to talk him into it. Right. Right. So when is that coming out? Oh, the rest of it? Yeah, the rest of it. It's the... confusing because now that we're, now that we've got these eight songs that we didn't expect to have, they've kind of set a schedule like there's another single coming soon and and maybe another video. You know, it's all this kind of modern boring, life spot. Boring. Thank you. I'm trying to get, <laughs> I'm trying to stuff. make something that's that not exciting. Nobody wants exciting. to know about how people actually release music. So let's just move on. But to, to, be, but to be to be uh, to finish my statement. Uh, Sorry, it's Sorry. fine. No, uh, the band's gonna break up again. Oh man, get back to Beverly you Hills. Just saw, you just saw Eat. it. You just saw it right there. That's, <laughs> that's where it all went wrong. No, uh, uh, at the end of the year, there's gonna be some sort of you know, you get to get all the songs together like a vinyl record or a something. Bundle. Okay. A bundle. Okay. And the plan for this tour though was you're gonna be doing a lot of the hits, right? Uh, well. Kevin Weatherly and I would disagree what hits are, but um, yeah, <laughs> <We're>, <laughs> he's our boss here, K Rock. I uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, we we decided with James coming back that we wanted to sort of refocus everyone on uh, because the last few years have been you know different lineups, everything. So it's like, look, this is this is the band w that three of us were in together, mm -hmm. right? And so let's start there, keep it real simple, and um, get off to a good start and. And then, you know, hopefully pivot to making new music. We are, play, of course, playing um, new music on the tour. It's not exclusively. Great. But I think by saying, look, we're just going to focus on the, the five records that we made together and not ask everyone to go for, along for a journey that many people we know didn't go on. Right. I think it just keeps it simple. Now, we need to take a break. The Smashing Pumpkins are here. Tell us about Solara because we're going to play it mm -hmm. uh, in a few minutes. Well, this is the one of the eight that Rick picked. And um, I don't know, just good old-fashioned rock and roll. Uh, nihilistic lyrics, um, a bleak outlook for the future, and a, and a good rock riff. That's, That's what pumpkins. we look for. That's what we look for, Thank right? <laughs> All right, so we'll play the it's new single, <laughs> and then we have to unveil the big announcement about what the Pumpkins are doing in town this week and start giving away tickets to it as well when we return right after this on K-Rock. So much has changed since the last time you guys uh, worked together. Uh, for instance, there's no, there's not much of a record industry <laughs> anymore. <laughs> Did you, uh, do you have, and do you need a label at this point with the way the music industry is, Billy? Uh, yeah, there's still, there's still a reason to work with a label. Um, because I think good labels these days do know how to navigate what is a constantly changing landscape as far as how to put a record out. So I'm still happy to work with people if they're, if they're in the modern world. Uh, we definitely can't deal with the old school BS. Mm -hmm. That's just... I mean that. I mean, uh, you, I mean, it, by the late '90s, it was already get, already getting pretty wonky. So, yeah. does it make yeah. it easier to do this now, or harder to do this now? Which part? The whole industry changing so dramatically in the last ten years. I, I think what's really encouraging, and you know, you know, you see it with some of the young rock bands that are coming up. I think kids are starting to discover the power of rock and roll music again because it's something that can't be manufactured. It really has to come from basements and garages and stuff like that and i think now that we've had these 15 20 years of sort of ubiquitous pop uh you know like a storm cloud just sits over everything i think those clouds are starting to part a little bit and kids are starting to want music that represents how they feel oh i hope you're right so much. I, I, right. I see a lot of encouraging <laughs> i see a lot of encouraging signs and so I, I don't want to say we've been proven right because we did you know we did a lot of dumb things but i think the things we represent which is you know, our, our relationship and uh, our willingness to make new music and try new things. I think that's that fits really well with what's coming. I also think that uh, in 2018, the fact that you guys can go into a studio this afternoon and have a song on streaming services available to everybody in the world tomorrow morning is amazing, as long as you don't mind not getting paid for it. Uh I mean, we never thought we were going to get paid for it in the beginning. So I'm not saying it's not important, but I'm saying it's not really why we make music. Right. Um, the world has changed a lot in the last uh, few years, and particularly in the last uh, year and a half. Does any of that make its way into your songs? Are you talking about poli politics? Or? Yeah. State of, state of America and, the, well, and the, the way American people have changed, it seems like, too. Well, I, I, I think you have to be careful because the minute you talk about politics these days people try to push you in a corner and as somebody who's like a true libertarian my concern is that everybody has a seat at the table and everybody feels empowered by our by our democratic systems our social systems and you know uh i mean 
to be, make it personal for a second, when we first started the Smashing Pumpkins, people would point out that James was Asian. Really? Oh, yeah. They would point that out? All the time. <laughs> like, <laughs> Why they, did... <laughs> literally, people would say, what's it like to be an Asian in a band? Oh, my gosh. What a question is that? And then we would get, what's it like to be a girl in a band? Sure. So point being is wow. that so we, we, we've lived through the changing times. And um, I think, again, similar thought to the musical thing, I think people are starting to really look for uh, solutions that sort of cross the political divide because we're getting so divided. Um, it's like, I don't want to say it's silly because we're talking about a lot of really serious and important things, but I think there's a real human desire to want to figure out how to not be so heated. Mm. Um, yeah, I feel like it does bring out the worst in both sides when you start talking politics. Well, selfishly and from a creative standpoint, sometimes the most turbulent times make for the best music. And I'm not trying to be uh, uh, silly about that. Right. Uh, I'm not saying, hey, it's great. The world sucks. So we can right. make greater tunes. What I'm saying <laughs> is sometimes artists has to step into the breach and create a kind of a communication that brings people together. I learned so much from people like... Uh, Marvin Gaye and James Brown and Sly and the Family Stone, you know, because my background was, you know, sort of white middle class. Mm -hmm. And I learned about things that maybe I would have never understood or reading, you know, Miles Davis's biography and the racism that he encountered. So music has a way of really sort of kind of leading the charge. Music and sports traditionally in America, at least it's you know, in the last 50, 70 years, maybe even 100, have, have helped kind of lead the way. And so maybe this is a time now where artists need to step forward and maybe find a better unifying message. And Well, we could all use it. I'll tell you that. I hope that's the case. All right, let's talk about this week a little bit. So you guys are in town. We're very limited as to what we are allowed to say, but you're planning a super secret show. I can say Wednesday night, right? That's what, that's what you, you can say. Yeah. I can say Wednesday night. You'll allow it. <laughs> At a very small venue. Can I just say the venue's name? No. I mean, you cannot. Look, it's up you're to not you. authorized. We're I've never going to yell at you guys. Play at... <laughs> you always want to play the venue. Okay. <laughs> Ralph's. The... Did you say Ralph's? Ralph's Deli. Is it Barney's Beanery, James? <laughs> <laughs> Barney's Beanery. That's They're going to be right? playing Barney's Beanery. <laughs> right. So uh, tickets are, are going to go on sale for this. Is that true? Yes. You, you are going to sell some tickets for it, and we are going to give away the rest. Correct. Fantastic. All right. In it's fact, a great we're gonna, venue. It's a great venue. All right. Historic. We are going to give away those tickets in <laughs> Barney's Beanery. In two ways right now on great the Kevin Bead Show. Smashing Pumpkins, anything else you want to leave us with? I'm sure we'll see you again and see you again soon, I hope. But anything else you want to uh, uh, announce or spread the word on or put in our heads or what? Or spoil? Just the name of the venue. <laughs> <laughs> Can't do it. Look, we're not making you keep it a secret. Should we break news about Jack's father's dust up? Oh, oh yeah. no. That's oh, is there a dust up? Yeah, please. That's good. Let's bring Jack to the that's, microphone. Can Jack, yeah, that's please, Jack. Bass Jack, player. What, what Jack introduce Bates. yourself. Tell him who your dad is and tell him about the dust up. Yeah, my my father's a musician. He was in uh, Joy Legendary Division. musician from <laughs> Joy Division Order. and New, New Order. He got in a fist fight. <laughs> I believe so. Obviously, I wasn't there, but I've heard about it secondhand. Your dad? Yeah. Got in a fist fight? At the show, yeah. At he the got show. With it, he got into the crowd and uh, got into it with someone. I got to be honest. I, I'm envious. That's kind <laughs> I, of... I kind of respect that as well. <laughs> my, my dad doesn't get in any fights anymore. I right? think it's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, and that's something for you to strive for, that when you get to be his age, you can still be getting in fights in the crowd. Yeah, if I'm, if I'm scrapping at 62... That'll be cool. You'll be happy. Sure. That's awesome. I love it. <laughs> All right, guys. A real pleasure to have you by here today. It's Thank great you. to see you. Thank you so much. We'll look forward Thank to you. Wednesday night. We'll look forward to seeing you again soon. Smashing Puppets, everybody. 